kingdom of God is comprised of and advanced by the people of God. Simple, entry level, mega important. The kingdom of God is comprised of and advanced by the people of God. Now, this is a simple point, but it has glorious implications that God's people are together and that's how his kingdom works. This point means that you are never, ever, ever truly and really alone. This point means that isolation and abandonment cannot be your inheritance. They will not be under God's divine decree. In God's economy, you will always, always have his people. You belong to a fixed and eternal covenant family. No matter where you go in the world or no matter how you feel in the day, his people will always be there. You can't outrun it. You can't get away from it, even when you want to. And beyond this, you will always, always, always have a purpose to enjoy and extend his kingdom. And that purpose is not going to change with your job or your season of life or your financial situation. And that purpose will always be sensed side by side with God's people. Number two observation on the screens for you. The kingdom of God is built on and sustained by the promises of God. The kingdom of God is built on and sustained by the promises of God. Now, God's kingdom, we just did it, will always include people, but Big but here, it isn't ever built on the foundation of human willpower, creativity, brilliance, strength, or ingenuity. It will always include people, but it's not built on the foundation of people being awesome on occasion. It is founded on God's covenant promises and faithfulness. And maybe you know this, this is a fun fact for today. Uh, the word anointed in your Bible is the Hebrew word where we get the word Messiah from, the Christ. And in a couple chapters in 2 Samuel 7, Yahweh promises David that from his line will come one who will reign forever, the true eternal anointed one whose reign will know no end, the Christ, the Messiah. Now, why do I tell you all that? You ready for this? What I'm telling you is that David's life can't be defined apart from the promises of God. Hear it, feel it. You better love it and know it. Here it is. David's life cannot be defined. You can't talk about David without talking about God's promises. Dude, can anybody say that about your life? That's what it is for David. David would have no understanding of who he was or what he should be doing if it wasn't for God's promises. He will be completely lost and aimless and up a creek with no paddle without God's promissory word to him. And man, I hope it's the exact same for us. And I love the way pastor and commentator Ralph Davis says all this in his commentary. It's a big quote, but it's worth it. Look up at the screens. Dale Davis says the following, Yahweh's promise to Abraham has proven true. In verses one through five taught us that Yahweh's promises are certain in spite of intense opposition Verses six through 10 teach us that his promises are certain in spite of chronological distance. The 800 or so years from Abraham to David do not erode the reliability of God's word. His promises are not stamped with an expiration date in small print. As the writer of Hebrews says, let us be grateful that we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, not because we're unshakable, but because Yahweh's promises are firm, so firm, that time cannot dissolve them nor enemies sabotage them. Yahweh's promises may be old, they may be opposed, but they are never false. And here's where I'm gonna dare to make like a pastoral and theological assumption. And this is for my own heart too. I bet that when stress enters your life, When you clench your fists, you're like, oh, if people knew what I knew, if God knew what I knew, we wouldn't be in this mess. Like when you're frustrated, when you're angry, when you're sad, when you're mad, so much of that, not all of it, so much of that is due to wrong assumptions about what God has actually promised you. Here's what I mean. I don't think it says in the book that you're not gonna have emotional pain to weigh you down. Like show me where it says you're never gonna have health issues. Show me where it says you're always gonna get the job or the house or the girl or whatever. Show me where it says you're never gonna have family fights at all. Show me 
where it says his people will always dodge and bob and weave from financial crisis. It doesn't say that. Show me where it says you're never going to have questions and doubts. He never promised any of those things. Sometimes they're the gracious icing on the cake, but he never promised any of those. However, friends, better than all these things, he promises you his love. He promises forgiveness. He doesn't hold it out and dangle it. He promises forgiveness. He promises eternal life for those who belong to him by trusting Jesus. Eternal life that starts in the here and now. He promises that you'll be a part of his people, his family. He promises that he will teach you through his spirit as you depend on him. He promises peace that passes understanding, transcends understanding and comprehension. And he promises that he will never, ever leave you or forsake you. This is the rock solid, immovable foundation of the kingdom of God, that he is good to his word. David believed it. David experienced it. We're called to trust it. And he, God, will always fulfill it. The kingdoms of this world, earthly religion and earthly politics, they sometimes might promise and deliver on a few tangibles here and there. But most of the time, and every one of us knows it, most of the time, they're telling us what we want to hear. And then they don't get around to doing everything they say. That's their move. That's how the world works. Not so with God. As Dale Davis says, his promises may be old and they may be, they may be opposed, but they will never, ever be false. And please hear this today, friends. This means that he is more trustworthy than the sum total of all your doubts and all your pains and all your questions. He is more trustworthy than all of those things. And that is precisely how his kingdom works through his faithful word to his people. Let's review. <clears throat> The kingdom of God is comprised of and advanced by the people of God. Two, the kingdom of God is built on and sustained by the promises of God. And the third thing we can see in our passage is that the kingdom of God offers assurance and hope because of the presence of God. The kingdom of God offers assurance and hope because of the presence of God. <clears throat> and I'll be a little bit more brief right here because... This kind of overlaps with our second observation. It's actually one of the most specific and repeated promises of God from the biblical story, from Genesis to Revelation. I will never leave you or forsake you. And this truth of God's nearness to us gives us confidence for the now and for the future. <clears throat> and David himself felt this, like we mentioned, at his private anointing in 1 Samuel and here in his public anointing in 2 Samuel, we see God's presence as the thing that makes kingdom happen God's way. Look down, last verse, verse 10. Look, and David became greater and greater for Yahweh, the God of hosts, was with him. When the promises of God were uttered at his anointing in 1 Samuel and God's spirit came upon him there, it gave David assurance and hope for what is happening here in our passage. And this summary statement in verse 10 reminds us that all the good that was happening in, in, in Israel at the time of David, it wasn't innately because of David. It was because of God. And, and I know that th I can get into like theological abstract thinking here, but I really believe that if God only gave us his promises from afar, uh, I have the feeling that it would be enough, right? Right? And I also think that if he only gave us his people, it would be enough to tell ourselves, dude, we are not alone. We are not alone. We'll make it. But you know what? He goes past all that, grace upon grace. He goes past all that and he gives us himself in a deeply and wonderful, intimate way. His very presence was with David. And it meant everything to David. And I know that it means everything to David because we've been reading the Psalms together. Pay attention, right? And you'll see that in David's writing and his songs. But also, I know that it meant everything to David because of what happens next in 2 Samuel 6. Just look at your bold subheading above 2 Samuel, Samuel chapter 6 in your Bible. Mine says, the ark brought to Jerusalem. <clears throat> and as you may recall, the ark of the covenant represented God's special holy presence among the people. And this just further proves that David adored and cherished the idea of God with him. And if you're a follower of Jesus, 
This very day, you have the fullness of God's own life dwelling within you in the person of the Holy Spirit. God's own life and presence in the middle of your very own life. And this is how God's kingdom comes and his will is done on earth as it is in heaven. His presence through our lives. And it doesn't mean that we're going to sense his presence rightly all the time. That's not what it means. And the couple, there's a couple of challenges to this, and I hope these are encouraging to you. We should never, ever mistake God's silence for his absence. We should never, ever, ever mistake his patience for his absence. He is there. And sometimes us sensing that truth is a little more difficult. And David knew this to be true, and I, I pray that we also know the same. Okay, for the sake of review, here we go. <clears throat> First, the kingdom of God is comprised of and advanced by the people of God. Next, it's built on and sustained by the promises of God. Next, it offers assurance and hope because of the presence of God. And fourthly, and lastly, <clears throat> The kingdom of God has as its source, its centrality, and its goal, the glory of King Jesus. He's the son of God. The kingdom of God has as its source, centrality, and goal, the glory of King Jesus. Jim, are you saying that this passage is really about Jesus? How is this passage really about Jesus? Thanks so much for asking that question. It's a question I think about literally every day of my life with any passage of the Bible. Jesus said in Matthew 5, John 5, and Luke 24 that all scripture is about him. <clears throat> and if I'm reading a text where the people of God are the collective bride wed to their royal groom, God's anointed king, and this anointed one, the Messiah, is to shepherd and care for and lead God's people. And he was 30 years old when he started doing it, when he was crowned king. And he did it all for the covenant, for the people of God, because of the promises of God, with the presence of God. If all that's on the table, you better know that we're mainly talking about Jesus. And Jesus' kingdom is the full substance of which David's reign was the shadow. And Jesus brings an upside down, shocking and sometimes surprising kingdom where we get life through his death, where we get blessed because he took the curse of sin for us where the poor in spirit get blessed and get the kingdom and not the rich in pockets, where eternal life has come backwards into the broken present, where weakness is strength. This is the kingdom of God that has come to us in Jesus the Christ. He is Emmanuel. He's God with us and for us. And the entire New Testament, in fact, the first line of the New Testament, the main title for Jesus is the son of David because he is who Yahweh promised to David, a royal son. And the increase of his government of peace will know no end. And Jesus is climactically what God's reign looks like and how it works. It is his kingdom. It is for his glory. He is like kingdom come in a single person. And because... This is true. Dozens of other things are true as well. Think about it. Dude, I hope this is like liberating for you. It's really simple. Jesus is king, and so you don't have to be. <laughs> Dude, let's take a nap. Let's go. Jesus is king, and so your spouse doesn't have to be. Jesus is king, and that means your favorite politician won't be. Jesus is king, and that means your least favorite politician won't be. Jesus is king, so now you can release your favorite pastor or Bible teacher from having to be. Jesus is king, and now you're set free from the burden of trying to be your own king in your own kingdom. You don't have to live under that weight. That's a weight you can't carry. You weren't made to carry. You can rely on him instead. He's not safe, but he's good. He's a good king. And all of this comes from the simple fact that he's the son of David. David's royal son who will reign forever. He's the king of all the kings. He's the Lord of all the lords. And because he defeated the ultimate enemies of sin and death and his cross and resurrection, he does not need you to take charge for him. He needs you to trust him and delight in him. He doesn't need you to exert top-down power or leadership over people. He needs you to shepherd people and care for them just like he did. 
He doesn't need you to be the strongest or the best or the smartest. He needs you to be the David-like runt of the litter, meek and available and faithful. He doesn't need you to lose your soul over political extremism or religious legalism. He needs you to be a part of his people, trust his promises, and cherish his presence. That is the kingdom of God with Jesus at the helm. And that's what we need most deeply in our lives and in this church. And this is, it forces us to ask questions like this. Today, am I going to think that I know how to rule better than Jesus? Today, am I gonna try to sit on the throne of my own life? Today, am I gonna trust my political team more than the people of God? Today, will I trust earthly possibilities more than heavenly promises? Today, am I gonna submit to Jesus as king even if I don't know what that will mean for my life? Today, will I bow to him as Lord and leader, shepherd and king? And I hope that in these things, we will rush to cast ourselves on the kindness and the strength of Jesus. Because just as God was with David, so is he with us in Christ and through his spirit. And that changes everything.